inside the insulation hardware for the head, you're going to find two hinge pads and the hinge that was in it. And then you're going to find the front bumpers for the machine to set on. You're also going to find a little bag with some small nails in it. Okay, the hinge pads go into the cutouts. You're going to need the nails. Joel here has strong fingers and can start the nail with his fingers and then start to hammer it in. You can also hold the nail with a pair of needle nose, get your fingers out of the way, and you can use a small bolt to get it down in there if you don't have a ball peen hammer. Okay, now on the front side, you have a black rubber pad that goes down into the bottom. And then your gray pad goes on top of it. Then you need a nail. Just make sure that nail goes into the wood. You need the nail on the top right here because sometimes the machine will go in and this will want to pull in. Okay, once you have the pads in, you can drop in the oil pan. And on the oil pan, there's a black screw right here. If you ever need to drain the oil out, it goes toward the belt. Alright, that's the plunger that will activate when you use your knee lift. When you activate the knee lift, this will come up, it'll push a lever up under the machine, your foot will raise up. Alright, the next thing you're going to want to do is to get the head out of the box. The head has some weight to it. You may need some help. Please save the box and all packing until you make sure the machine is running as it should be. This is your pulley guard. Okay. 
the hinge pins. They have holes in the back. So you want the farthest holes. A little card on the pressure adjustment for your foot is your serial number. Set the head down into the hole and just press the hinges down into the hinge pads. Do not be concerned if there's oil on the machine. They do that when they pack it. And make sure when you first start it up that it'll run smoothly. Next thing you want to do is install your hand wheel pulley. There is a flat spot on the shaft. And there are two screws on the pulley. You want the first screw as the hand wheel turns towards you. If you're looking at it from the side, counterclockwise to line up for that flat spot. If you'll notice right here, the one he's tightening up, it is the first screw that's gonna to come to him when the hand wheel is turning toward him. Here's the second screw. Once that screw is tightened, you tighten the second screw. And what you're gonna want is right here, this is gonna be flush. You don't want to cram this hand wheel all the way back. It'll lock up. You want a gap here. It will turn smooth with the gap. Tilt your head back. Put the belt on. Tilt the head back forward. Okay. The motor is still loose down below. It is The belt's not tight. If I was leaning this head back, you'd see the motor drop. We'll do that at the end. But if you'll notice right now, the belt is approximately in the center of the slot. This is the back belt guard. This is the pulley guard, which also covers part of the belt. And that's the mounting hardware. This little thing right here is just a beauty piece. It makes it look nice. It just snaps in and out. This is your bobbin winder. You line up the drive wheel on the bobbin winder onto the belt. Make sure it is straight. You will have some more sheet metal screws in your kit. And you're going to put them in the center of these slots. Just one in each. That way you have adjustment in and out. What this is going to do when you push it in is it's going to contact this belt when this belt is tight. This will turn until your bobbin fills up and then it will kick out 
It'll hit the stop on the back. Your bobbin would, will stop filling up. So you can put a bobbin on and sew and have the bobbin filling up while you're sewing. Okay, there is an extension. It goes on the back of the machine. Well, on the side of the machine toward the back, excuse me. Put that in and there is a slot in it on, on the end of it. Please tighten it down. And you got to work around the belt a little bit, but that will cover the whole thing. There's a small black screw and a washer. It actually goes into that extension that you just put on. Now there are two bigger screws. The other one goes on the front side. Beauty trim back on, makes it look nice. And then this back part is adjustable. You're going to have two more sheet metal screws. Get them about the center of the two slots, that way you have some adjustment. Okay, now this is your head stop for when you tilt it back. Just push it all the way down into the table. Okay, this is your thread guide. What you want to do here is this disc, you want to line it up to where it's in line with this thread guide. Don't get too rambunctious with putting it in. There's actually a little line on this. You want to take it down to there and it will not come out. It's, a, it's held in with friction. When you go to thread it, your thread's going to go through the bottom. Come up and over between the two discs, go into here, loop around, go into the bottom hole, then come down to your tension assembly.
totally adjustable. You can adjust the pad up and down on the shaft here. You can adjust the angle of it. And you can adjust how far this goes in and out right here. Okay, as you move your knee, the foot's going to go up and down. Tightening the belt up. You're going to turn the top nut to bring the motor down, which will put tension on the belt. And then you will lock it in place for the bottom nut. Putting the light on is very simple. It's a magnetic base. Aim it where you need it. Okay, this is an inch and three eighths. It's a paddle bit. Now there are two ways to do the light. One is you can drill a hole right here. This is what we normally do. It's a little neater. The other way is you can just bring it around and plug it into the motor. The other way is to just bring it around and plug it in. Personal preference. This is the way we do it. It's neater if people have a lot of machines. This hole is going to be for the thread stand. Now the light switch on the light, if you like it on all the time when you're working, just leave it on. When you turn the machine off, the light will go off. So power the machine, power off the machine. Now what you're going to want to do we don't do it here because we usually ship these machines out to a company. We don't put the oil in the pan. But at this point in time, you're going to tilt your head back. You're going to take your oil bottle. You're 
you're going to open it up, you're going to pour it right in here. As long as it's no higher than the high level, and in between these two lines, you don't want it to get down to low or below that. This pump will submerge into the oil, and when you run your machine, it'll self-oil. Thread stand comes with everything you need to put it together and attach it to the table. You'll notice this one only has the holes in the side. It goes into the top piece. The bottom piece is going to have the mounting hardware to attach it to the table. That's where you put your thread spools. You're going to have three holes for the uh, holders for the thread. Skip the one in the middle, otherwise your threads are going to bump into each other. The reason you have two places for threads, one of them can be your bobbin, the other one's the one you sew with. Slide the plastic dish on first, then the foam pad, then put your uh, spool holders on. This piece will slide onto the bottom part. You don't want to slide it all the way down, you want to keep it up toward the top, but you got to have enough room put the connecting piece on to the top and bottom. When you tighten that down, that piece will pinch the top mast and the bottom mast and hold it together. Okay, you're going to have two washers that are metal and two that are neoprene. Neoprene. Then from the bottom you put the neoprene on so it's touching the table. The metal one goes on below that and then the nut. When you put this on just take an adjustable wrench, tighten that nut down, and this won't move on you. <laughs> 